Now, after stopping off in the UK, President Zelensky headed to Paris and then Brussels, where he made sure to make time to speak to his closest ally throughout the war, the Polish President Andrzej Duda. Just before that, I went to Warsaw to talk to President Duda about his friend and ally's request for jets. Should the West, nearly a year into the conflict, send its own fighter planes to Ukraine? Our interview with the President does contain some flashing images. It is incredible courage they are showing. It really deserves our deepest respect, this heroism the whole world is witnessing every day, seeing how Ukrainians are defending themselves against the Russian aggression. It is not enough, however, to defend themselves. What they need is to have modern and efficient equipment, armaments that will help Ukrainians to repel their aggressor. This weaponry has to be delivered to Ukraine all the time. Ukraine has to win, Ukraine has to repel the Russian aggression, but for it to be able to do so, it needs armaments. But President Zelensky says now he needs jets. Why not send them? In fact, he says Poland has F-16s that you could send. F-16s are one of the best jets in the world, so there is no doubt about how efficient they are. The problem from our point of view is a different one. First of all, we think that this requires a decision by the Allies anyway, which means that we have to make a joint decision. Also, due to the fact that there is a very serious need for maintenance of F-16s if they were to be deployed somewhere, it is not only about the jets. You also need maintenance and technical background, technical servicing and so on and so forth. So it is not enough just to send a few planes, a few jets. And a problem that we are facing, at least in Poland, is as follows. We have such jets, but they are fewer than 50. So, as a matter of fact, this is our only stock of jets that we have. This poses a serious problem if we donate even a small part of them anywhere, because I don't hesitate to say we have not enough of these jets. We would need many more of them. A decision today to donate any kind of jets, any F-16s, to donate them outside Poland, is a very serious decision, and it's not an easy one for us to take. It took Germany a long time to make up their mind about sending Leopard tanks. Do you feel frustrated ever that some of their, your allies have not been as proactive, has, have not been as quick to help and have not been as generous as Poland has? No, you cannot really talk about such things as being frustrated or not. A politician cannot be frustrated. I am doing what I believe is the right thing in the interest of the Polish people and from the point of view of the security of our part of Europe and also the security of Ukraine. Because what is important to us is to make sure that a free, sovereign and independent Ukraine survives and exists. Also, what is important is that the Russian imperialism, which is reborn, be stopped, so that Russia hears a very strong and decisive no, so that Russia is repelled. And what is your worst fear now? I mean, we already saw in November a missile come over into Poland that you believe was sent in error by Ukraine. But what was that moment like? Did you feel this could be it, this could be the beginning of your country being threatened in the way that Ukraine has. I approached that event in a very calm way. Of course, I knew that the missiles fell down. But we also received information that they fell very close to the border. Initially, we heard there were two rockets. Then it turned out that it was a, one rocket after all. They fell close to the border and they did not hit any military targets. So it was very probable indeed that they were not aimed at the spot where they crashed. But then it turned out that it was a, simply an accident. However, of course, we do fear that some kind of an act of aggression could be carried out, some kind of a provocation could be carried out against us, against Poland. We are now approaching the anniversary of the war. There are fears of a new offensive from Russia. What would your warning be to your allies? What would your warning be to the rest of Europe about, about what might be next? First and foremost, you need to highlight that before the Russian aggression started against Ukraine, very many analytical documents which we received were saying that the war would not last longer than 72 hours, that Russia would be able to capture Ukraine within 72 hours. Nothing like that happened. 
On the 23rd of February, just a few hours before the Russian aggression started, I visited Kyiv, where I talked with President Volodymyr Zelensky. And when we said goodbye, Volodymyr told me, Andrzej, if Putin thinks that he would control Ukraine and that his army would enter and just take our land, then he's deeply mistaken. You're going to see, Russians will not pass through. And he was right. The West has to support Ukraine today as strongly as it can, because Russian imperialism, neo-colonialism of Russia is really dangerous. Today it poses a threat to Ukraine, tomorrow there will be the Baltic states and then other countries will follow. What would you say though to some of our viewers who might think maybe there should be a compromise, maybe President Zelensky should find a way of finding a resolution because or else the suffering might continue? So already back then, when I addressed the United Nations for the first time speaking at the General Assembly, I said the following, peace is possible only through law, only through the respect for international law. Respect of international law is the best guarantee of peace. As a matter of fact then, if the war is to come to an end, if Russian aggression is to come to an end, that primacy of international law has to be restored. The international law has to prevail. International law guarantees peace and security. According to international law, Ukraine has to regain its territories which are internationally recognized. So as a matter of fact, Russians have to leave Ukrainian territories they occupied. And what would you say as a leader to Vladimir Putin if he was here? What would I say to Vladimir Putin? I would tell him that sooner or later it has to finish badly for him, because I believe that the world will be united. I believe that the world will remain on the side of honesty and justice, and honesty and justice is with Ukraine. If the world, if the free world, if the Western community, the Western democracies, NATO, the European Union, together with the United States, bound by our Atlantic ties, if they give permanent support to Ukraine, then Vladimir Putin has to lose. And sooner or later, it will mean he falls. I just want to ask you about a couple of other issues. Um, at the moment, in your country, an activist, Ustina Wojcicka, is being prosecuted and could be sent to prison for helping a woman get an abortion. Now, many of our viewers would find that very difficult to accept, very difficult to understand. Is that proportionate? Would you like to see the prosecutor drop those charges? Madam, you're asking me, as I understand, about my personal views and opinions. I am Catholic, and of course, because of that, I am a very strong defender of life, and I am an opponent of abortion. So that is all I can say about this. Now, and of course, I have always been for life, for the protection of life, and I have never been hiding this. But this is a question really about the law and how the law is used in your country. I absolutely respect your views on that. But is it proportionate that in this country, for the first time, an activist could be sent to jail? In Poland, if we're speaking about the status, the legal status, the Constitutional Tribunal took a decision, it passed a ruling. So these are not laws which would have been passed by the Polish Parliament. The Constitutional Tribunal passed the judgment which repealed the provisions it considered were contrary to the Polish Constitution, because the Polish Constitution clearly stipulates protection of life. Every economy around the world has been struggling to get back on its feet after COVID and all sorts of other challenges, and of course the war in Ukraine has had a big effect. But now, by some measures, Poland's economy is in much better shape than the United Kingdom's economy. And at home, many people often think about Poles coming to the UK for work. Could it be that we might see British builders coming here instead of Polish plumbers coming to the UK? <laughs> Thank you for your compliments about Poland. As the president of Poland, I am very grateful for them. I would like to send my greetings to all my compatriots who are living in the UK and working in the UK, working hard, because as the Brits know very well, Poles are capable of working diligently and honestly. They have demonstrated that over the past few decades in the UK. 
If things are so good, then I encourage all my compatriots to come to Poland, to come back home and to work here. But first and foremost, I am glad that Poland is represented there in the UK. I believe that my compatriots contribute well to the development of the United Kingdom, the building of the British economy, the British economy as an economy of success. Mr. President, thank you so much for speaking to us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.